On January 14th last year, that man, the defendant, Jamel Crockham, in broad daylight and in cold blood, executed Officer Christopher Matlos of the Lakewood Police Department. He was walking on August Drive in Lakewood when Officer Matlos came up to him driving a patrol car. They had a conversation. Apparently the officer asked him for ID. He started to walk away. He got a little bit behind the, path, the, the rear door of the officer's car, and as the officer was attempting to open his door, rather than pulling out his ID, he went into his right pocket, produced a 38 caliber revolver, and shot Officer Matlos in the back of the neck. Then he stepped forward, put the gun inside the car, shot Officer Matlos in the face, and to make sure he was dead, he put the gun a couple of inches from his head and fired a third shot into Officer Matlos's left temple. One of the things that is undisputed, Jamel Crockham was in Lakewood on that day. Officer Matlos died on that day. Cell phone records, videotape, his own statement, he doesn't dispute he was there. What he denies is that he was the shooter. And what you're going to hear that you, and I, I respect what Mr. Heisler said, he doesn't have to lay out every detail of his whole case right now. We'll hear it all. We'll be here together for it. But one of the things that you're going to hear is that on that day, Mr. Crockham was not the only person on the streets in dark clothing. When Officer Valman called and tried to find out where Jamil Crockham was for reasons unrelated to Officer Matlos at the time, he stirred the hornet's nest and two or three guys hit the streets in dark clothing. And I submit to you, you will be unable to determine who went where, who did what, and why. I heard uh, shots. At the time, I wasn't sure what it was. It sounded, it sounded very muffled to me. I thought it was more like a cap gun, but um, I turned around. It could be after the second shot or the third shot. It could be there were, there were three shots fired. And after either the second or the third, I turned around and I saw this man up into the window of the police car. And I saw smoke billowing out of the window, the driver's side window of the police car. What did you observe when you got there? When I got there, I observed uh, vehicles parked. As I recall, the driver's door was open. There was a gentleman standing outside the door, um, who I described in my report as a uh, middle-aged, possibly Hispanic-looking man. He was just standing there outside the door looking into the vehicle. And did you look into the vehicle? Yes, I did. And when you did that, what did you see? I observed uh, Officer Christopher Matlow seated in the driver's seat. Um, I immediately noticed his shirt was covered in blood. Uh, there was blood about his face, dripping from his nose. And the item here that's sitting on the seat, can you tell the jury what that is? That would be the front panel of uh, Officer's ballistic uh, vest. And to your knowledge, was that removed to remove him from the car? Yes, I believe that was removed by first aid. Okay. There was no signs of life that I could detect. Uh, no sound, no breathing, uh, no chest rise and fall, no motion. Um, body was positioned toward the door. His head was downward and his eyes were closed. This defendant appeared to be around 20 years old to you, sir? Yes. Is he between 5'8 and 5'10 in your estimation from there? Yes. How's his build? Stocky, very stocky. Okay, you also said he had a round face and very big lips. Does this defendant have a very round, a round face and very big lips? Yes. You also said he had a very dark skin tone at that time a year ago, correct? Yes. Does this defendant have a very dark skin tone? Yes. Is this the guy you saw shoot the police officer? I, I'm almost definite. Thank you.